Hey, GearHeads, it's Jeff with Gear Report. We're here at the gathering. It's the 2021, the inaugural version of this uh, Firearms Media Range Day with a bunch of great companies. We have had an opportunity, and, and honestly, I gotta, gotta say thanks to Hank Strange because he talked to Corey from Microtech and said, hey, you gotta go talk to the Gear Report guys. So Corey has stopped by. Uh, we're here in the lodge at the sawmill. We're gonna do a couple things here. He's gonna help me understand the Microtech brand, the scope of the products, and then uh, maybe even show us something. We're not gonna open this yet. You're gonna have to stick around if you wanna see what's in here. It's new, it's exciting, I'll tell you that much. So, uh, Corey, thanks so much for, uh, for joining me up here. Uh, what, what, what can you tell us about Microtech? Well, thanks for having me. So, um, this is actually Microtech's 27th year in business. Um, for a very long time, Microtech as a knife company was sort of in a very niche role. Um, we're obviously known for making our, you know, out the front knives, um, which a lot of people sort of attribute to being like switchblades. Um, but so the big thing, in my opinion, that really put us on the map in the just general consumer market was actually the John Wick franchise. Mm. Um, so that was where kind of one of the bigger movies where our knives were featured, uh, and that kind of just exploded us and now we're in a very kind of unique position where we cannot make knives fast enough. <laughs> wow. All right. That's kind of cool. So so you have this type of knife. How many knives are there in the product line? Technically speaking, we've got roughly two to three thousand SKUs. Oh my goodness. Um, obviously there's only a handful of models and then it just varies with color, blade mm -hmm. style. Essentially, we have our Ultratech, which is our flagship knife, okay. um, which is actually what appears in the first John Wick movie. Okay. Um, and then we've got two smaller versions of that, which is the UTX-85 and the UTX-70, mm -hmm. as well as uh, what we have here is the Combat Troodon, which is our largest knife. So we have about six to seven different OTF models in some type of variation. Um, and then we have probably about five to six uh, folding style knives as well. Got it. Cool. So this one is actually a newer model that we actually came out with last year. This is our Combat Delta that we designed for a Special Forces group. There were some things that they came to us, uh, sort of requested to see if it was possible for us to accomplish in a knife. Sure. Um, and then we kind of went a little overboard and, and uh, just did some crazy things with it. So unlike most of our knives that have proprietary hardware, uh, these have standard Torx bits um, so they can be taken apart and cleaned in the field if necessary. Um, they have fluting for water, mm -hmm. and obviously because of that, we also have the internals nickel boron coated, um, wow. so that obviously it's more resistant and corro corrosively protected from rust. Um, and then all of the hardware is DLC'd. So we kind of just nice. went to town on this one and decided to, <laughs> you know, throw all the, you know, throw the yeah. kitchen sink at it. Um, and then obviously uh, models like this, uh, we actually filled these to a lot of police, military, and first responders, partially because most of our knives have some type of carbide glass breaker on them. Mm -hmm. um, but these being manual knives, there's very little that can go wrong with them. They're always going right. to work. Um, and these are tanks. I mean, even if you just you know hold, you can feel how solid this is. Oh, yeah. um, and with the blades being a lot thicker, especially in those types of roles and capacities, mm -hmm. realistically, you might end up having to use a knife for something that you're not supposed to use an knife for. Sure. Um, and so having a thicker blade that can really take a beating is advantageous. Yeah, that's nice. Cool. Um, yeah, and so actually we're also, uh, we're actually very, very close to here. So we're located in Asheville, North Carolina. Right. Um, Microtech has moved around quite a bit. Um, we had our Vero Beach days where a lot of our sort of vintage knives come from, uh, as well as we do have a facility in uh, Pennsylvania that's just manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the cool things, at least in my opinion, is that we uh, manufacture essentially 100% of all of the parts uh, for our knives in house. Wow. You know, only thing we don't do is uh, things like springs. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's companies that have been doing springs for a yeah. hundred years, so we're not trying to reinvent the wheel on that one. <laughs> right. All right, I think we kept people in suspense long enough. What's in the box? So this is actually uh, new, um, obviously was new for last year, but with uh, COVID-19 and everything, didn't get nearly as much uh, kind of TV time. Right. Um, but this is our new R-squared K9 silencer. Um, so a couple of years ago, uh, the owner of our company kind of just woke up, had a, had a dream, and woke up and decided that he wanted to uh, venture into trying to make the best nine, dedicated nine mil silencer that he could. Um, and so this is where this uh, silencer was born. So this was also actually fielded to uh, 
a couple military units. <laughs> Technically can't say who these went to, but like I can say that they went to some of the best guys uh, that we have. Uh, but this is actually made out of six AL4V titanium. Wow. And so because of that, it is full auto plus P rated. Right. And we, we've tried, we've thrown them on uh, MP5s, all sorts of other different uh, full auto guns, and we've tried to break them, and, and honestly, we can't. Got a couple titanium suppressors. Yes. I actually cracked one over uh -huh. heating it. Is this, so that's not an that's issue? That's not been an issue with us at all. Okay. Um, you'll also notice, um, kind of as you're spinning it around, mm -hmm. that the baffles do not fall out. Right. Um, the reasoning is because we actually have a patent on this uh, where the baffles are actually captured mm -hmm. in both uh, the long and short configuration as this is modular. Mm -hmm. um, and so you obviously do have the front cap, and it would be recommended to shoot it just for maximum suppression with the front sure. cap on it, obviously but especially for um, the people this is fielded for or any type of actual operational needs, if you were to lose the front cap or something, the silencer is still um, operable. Um, it's not right. completely wasted. So you can run it with the end cap on this or add this yes. for the additional? Um, and so obviously with the longer configuration, you do get um, increased suppression, mm -hmm. um, but typically as with most uh, kind of things, there's a trade off and you get significantly more length to the can, yeah. which you know, if you and me are just going out on the range to shoot, um, that's not that big of a deal. But if you're looking for something that is significantly smaller and you know, kind of more maneuverable, the short configuration is gonna be what you wanna go with. And it actually, in the short configuration, has been tested third party um, and is nearly as quiet as most full size nine mil cans right now. It's actually doing about 36 to 37 uh, dB reduction uh, at the muzzle. So what the water does is basically just, it accelerates the cooling of the okay. gas okay. and it alters the environment, like the atmospheric environment inside so the... So just, uh, as the rounds go by, it's just burning the water out every shot? It's yeah. A little bit less. Okay. Um, okay. Like I said, because of the way the baffles are designed, it holds it for anywhere from 50 to about 100 rounds. All right. The water, the water test, Jeff. Yeah. All right, and I see you got a fixed mount on the back, and we do. you've got your devices um, and, in here for yep. And this is uh, this is actually how the entire set comes. Um, so when you purchase the silencer from us, you get um, by default two pistons. Um, so you get a one half by twenty eight, as well as a thirteen and a half by one left hand, uh, and then you also get a fixed barrel spacer. So relatively speaking, outside of sort of some of the more unique thread pitches, um, you're pretty much ready to run on most pistol, you know, threaded barrels that you're gonna have. Right. That's nice, and you said it's been out for about a year? It has, so we, um, we actually developed it, did R&D stuff uh, for roughly two years, two, uh, two, two and a half, um, and then when we submitted it for military trials, that took about another year, um, which is a very long process, right. but once we kind of cleared that process and started fulfilling that contract, we decided to bring it to the commercial market. That's pretty cool. A anything else from Microtech you wanna talk about? Um, we do have a couple of prototypes of this model um, in a few different calibers we've been mm -hmm. testing. Um, and obviously this year we uh, can't say much, but have uh, some very exciting new knife models coming out. So definitely mm -hmm. be on the lookout for that. Thanks again for stopping by. Really Thanks for having appreciate me, it. Uh, we're going to see if we can get out and shoot it. Until next time, we'll see you at the range. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments. A big thanks to our patrons for helping us bring you more unbiased, hands-on reviews. Thank you very much, and we'll see you at the range. Thank you.